Hello everybody. So today's video, we will be talking about Kirchhoff's laws. And Kirchhoff's laws are separated into two subcategories. One is called Kirchhoff's current law, also known as KCL. And the definition of Kirchhoff's current law is that the sum of currents exiting or entering the node is equal to zero. And what we have the, this here, a diagram below, is what how KCL works. So we have two currents that is exiting the node and we have one current right here that is entering that node and we could make this to an equation so i1 and i3 are exiting that node and we can assume that that would be considered uh, positive and i2 which is entering that node would be the opposite effect which is negative and we could represent that as a kcl equation so we have i1 plus i3 minus i2 and that would equal to zero. Now we have this other diagram right here and what we want to do is we want to determine what I4, uh, the direction of where I4 is flowing. Well what we have are three other currents and we're already given that all three of these currents are entering that node. And we can assume that when it is entering that node it would be considered positive. So what that is, is that it is I1 plus I2 plus I3. And we're gonna leave a blank right here and put this to equal to zero. Now, the only clue that we can determine whether I4 uh, is exiting or entering that node is to understand what KCL is. And we do know for in fact that KCL states that the sum of all currents exiting or entering that node is equal to zero. And that basically means is that I4 has to exit, has to be facing the direction where it is where it is leaving that node because all three other currents are entering it. Therefore, it has to be negative. And there we have what Kirchhoff's current law is. Let's move on to Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL. And KVL is almost the same thing as KCL. And it states that the, volt, the sum of all voltages along a closed loop path is equal to zero. So to find KVL, let's draw a loop in the circuit. And to uh, by assigning sign convention, what we do is we um, determine which uh, polarity the uh, path is entering. So we we'll, we can assume that if the path is entering from uh, the positive sign to the negative sign then that would be considered a positive and if it is the opposite uh, such as v1 then it will be negative therefore we have a positive v2 here and positive v4 because the path is entering from the positive sign so it's v2 plus v4 and then V1 and V3 is going to be the opposite because the path is entering through the negative. So therefore we have uh, minus V1 and then minus V3. And that is our KVL equation. And now we have to determine what V1 is, what the polarities are. And we can do this again by drawing another loop here. And we can determine that all three voltages, well, not this one but these two are entering through the positive sign so we have plus v2 and plus v3 and since the path is entering from the negative sign for v4 it is minus 4 
and the V1 could be anything. So let's assume that V, the sum of the voltages between V2 and V3 are bigger than V4 altogether. So therefore V1 has to be, uh, oops, uh, it has to follow the same direction of what V4 is. So it has to be minus V1. And there we have our KVL equation. So here we have a practical example on applying KCL and KVL. So this question asks us to find what V1, I1, V2, I2, V3, and I3 are. So let's first apply KCL within a node. And let's choose this node right here. And we have I1 entering the node, I2 exiting the node, and I3 exiting the node. So our KCL equation would essentially equal to I1 minus I2 minus I3 is equal to 0. Now let's apply KVL. And we're going to have two loops, one right here and then another one right here. And let's look at our first closed loop path. And that first path is... Uh, and let's assume that um, it is positive when it is entering through from the plus to the minus. Therefore, our KVL equation, our first one, would be minus 30 plus V1 plus V2 is equal to 0. And then our second equation would be v3 minus v2 is equal to 0. Now we can determine what I want, what the currents or voltages are. And in this example, let's find what the currents are because that's a little more easier. And because we want to find the current, then we're going to have to translate these into currents. And to do that, we have to uh, apply Ohm's law here and identify what uh, the currents are in uh, the KVL equations. So first for V1, in Ohm's law for V1, that is equal to I1 times 8 ohms. So what we have here is we're going to have uh, 8 times I1. And for V2, that is equal to 3i2. And that is our equation, our second equation to find what the current is. And then V3 is equal to 6 times i3. And then the same thing for V2, which is 3i2. And that goes to our third equation. And this is our first equation. And now I'm just going to write out everything together. I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals equal to 0. And then we have here minus 30 plus 8I1 plus 3I2 is equal to 0. And finally, 6I3 minus 3I2 is equal to 0. Now, Let's solve one of the currents first. And uh, what we know, and what we do know, is that I2 appears in all three equations. And what that means is that we can isolate uh, I1 and I3 in equation 1 and 3 to find what I2 are. So in this equation, let's isolate I1. And I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. In this equation, well, in this equation right here, we have I3 is equal to 0 0.5 times I2. 
And now, given i1 and what i3 is, we can sub it in to get what uh, i2 is. So we have minus 30 plus 8 i2 plus i3 plus 3 i2 is equal to 0. And we know what i3 is, which is 0 0.5 times i2. So we have 8 and then plus 0 0.5 i2 plus 3 i2 is equal to 0. And then if we uh, now we can isolate and find what i2 is. And i2 is going to be 2 amps. And then we can sub in i2 into equation 3 right here to find what i3 is. And i3 is going to be 1 amp. And if we sub both of these values in to equation 1, we can find what I1 is. And I1 is equal to 2 plus 1, or 3 amps. Now we're given what each current are. Now we're going to have to find what the voltages V1, V2, and V3 are. And what we do know is that we already determined what the Ohm's law picture is. So V1 is equal to 8I1, V2 is equal to 3I2, and V3 is equal to 6I3. And then we can sub these values in to determine what each voltages are. So for V1, it's going to be 24 volts. V2 is going to be equal to 6 volts. And V3 is going to be equal to 6 volts as well. And there we go. This is a practical example on how to use KCL and KBL to find our unknown elements. Here are some other videos that I would like to recommend you watching. You guys can enjoy the videos nodal analysis or mesh current analysis. And if you haven't watched all four other preliminary videos, Wide Delta Transformation, Series and Parallel Resistors, Voltage and Current Division, or Kirchhoff's Laws, I recommend you guys watching those first before touching upon those two.